Hi, this is Pollyanna Hale from FitMumFormula.com and I've got something a little bit different today because I've been reading a book. In fact, let me find it for you. I've been reading this book called 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. Um, it's the third book um, it, that's similar in this series. The first one is the famous Sapiens book. It just, it's just really fascinating. What it does is it goes into sort of human psychology and it goes into how we think... Uh, why we've always done the things that we do as humans, right from the word dot, right from when we think that human race was created. And it's fascinating. And it got me thinking, what would I put on a list of 21 life lessons if I came up with my own list? They might not be quite as deep and philosophical as in this book. But do you know what? For my nearly 36 years, um, I think I've seen and done and learnt quite a lot. I think I've experienced life, I've been through some really tough times, I've been through some amazingly good times, I've done some travelling, i met some incredible people, and I do consider myself, and I want to big myself up here, quite a um, a, a world-wise person, I've seen a lot, and um, I thought I'd put together my own list. Um, I couldn't think of 21, I came up with 23, um, and they are, um, I've written them all down here, so I don't forget any. So, so I thought I'm going to read to you my 21 life lessons that I think are things worth passing on to you, which you can, um, now watching this video and you'll also be able to see them in the blog post when that goes up as well. I'll uh, type them up there for you. <clears throat> right, so number one, the more we rely on technology, the less we value human interaction and this directly correlates to decline in emotional well-being. Technology is an incredibly fantastic tool, but it's just a tool. Don't fuck with a hacksaw. My, what I mean by that is, people often criticise social media and the internet and people spending all their time flicking through Facebook and wasting time and the fact that we're, you know, we're not engaged in real life and they say, oh, it's a really bad thing, get rid of it, get rid of it all. I think that's terrible of us. I think it's fantastic the way we can keep in touch with each other, we can share things, we can meet people online, we can connect with like-minded people who would have a real struggle doing in real life because maybe you're a little bit unique and finding people like you is tough. Well, you can now do that online and it offers such so many amazing things, but it's just a tool. And I think the problem comes when it takes over your life. So if you use it, for what it is and the benefits it has to offer, then you're getting the benefits of it. And without, with just don't spend all your time just mindlessly flicking. Make sure what you're doing online has a purpose. Okay, number two, the day you not only realise but truly believe you don't have to copy other people, you are free. I've always been a little bit different since the day I was born, um, and I spent a long time feeling very out of place. I was bullied. Um, I've always felt, I, I find it hard to connect to other people because I am very, um, I'm just different. I'm a different sort of person. I'm on the bipolar spectrum. Um, I think differently. I have a different outlook on life to a lot of people. Um, and it's made it quite hard to form close bonds. Um, it took me a long time to be very comfortable with who I am. Um, and today I can safely say that I am so happy being whoever I am, that it's it's just taken a weight, weight off my shoulders. And I think so many people think they have to be a certain way, do certain things, dress a certain way, because everybody else does that. And you really, really don't. You can be exactly who you are. And people who judge you, um, that you know, they're not worth having in your life. You know, they don't matter, those people. The people who really love you, they will love you whoever you are, whatever you're doing. Okay, number three, whatever happens in politics... Don't forget the politics of you. Most people who vote don't have nearly enough of an understanding of the complexities of politics and economics to be allowed to vote. But you can always start with you and being the best person you can be. Now, at the time of writing, there's, uh, what's going on in the news at the moment is Brexit. It's talk, talk, talk all the time. Before that, we had the Brexit, the actual Brexit voting a couple of years ago. And there's so many people up in arms about things that go on in the world of politics. And they moan about the things that the government are doing and not doing. And the, the thing is, though, you as a single person don't have a lot of power over big corporations like the government. You know, as a group, collectively, maybe. But you as a single person can't do an awful lot. But what you can do is take your values into your own life. You can be a good person. That is... 
wholly in your control. You can do the things that you believe in and you can live, live your life live your life in a way that you feel is important and you have control over a lot more of your life than you think and i think it's too easy to put the blame onto other things and to blame things like the politics of your country that and forget that actually you have a lot of control over your life and if you just start there your world if it's not the whole country then your world will be a better place Okay, number four laws are nothing but a figment a figment of someone's imagination now this is something that sets humans apart from other animals is we have an imagination and we have the ability to believe in things which aren't real for example laws you can't see them they're they are like a belief system you can't pick them up you can't hold them uh limited companies um that's just the fact that a, a company is limited as opposed to just a sole trader that's not a thing you can pick up and see it's in our imagination religion as well animals don't have religion but humans can can believe in these things that they create in their own minds and they work they really do believe in them and I, and laws are just one of those things um i'm not saying go out and break the law but what i am saying is things aren't always as they seem just because something is you think something is a given in life you know maybe people go to church because there's a god you follow certain laws because um the you know the policeman says so you um you have to stick to certain conventions and yes most of these have been put in place for a reason to create order and because they um they help create sort of a guideline for living if you like but never forget that they are not a thing they are not an apple growing on a tree they are not a baby being born they are not a thing they are purely in our imagination and all it would take is for one person's imagination if whoever came up with that idea if they come up with a different idea then the way we see things like religion and laws would be extremely different purely based on what popped into that person's head on that given day really interesting thought how, how different life could have turned out In number 5, boredom is a precious commodity. The mind flourishes in white space and I'm envious of people who manage to not fill it with crap. That's because I have a major monkey mind and it goes buzz 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 all the time. Um but actually um sometimes it used to drive me mad when my husband when I was running around cleaning and tidying and doing the kids and all sorts and he's at the end of the garden staring into space for fag. And going, "Come on, you you can think you know just do something but actually what i realized is what he was doing is thinking and the reason he's got this time to think or he creates this time to think is that's when he comes up with amazing ideas and that's why he's always been very successful in things like business um and in life because he and he's very wise he's a very wise person because he actually takes the time to just do nothing and just think and i try and do more of that but i have to say i'm really bad at it and i am one for grabbing a magazine turning the telly on uh, doing something if i've got a spare moment i will fill it with something and if i've got blank in my brain i will fill it with something and i am um, i try and <laughs> get better at that i'm working on it let's leave it at that okay 90% of paper currency carries traces of cocaine If you think there is a one person within 200 meters of you right now with class A's on them not including the banknotes you are mistaken it's an underworld you can't see it but it's there is that good bad or neutral well that's for you to decide um i grew up in um a very nice area in um in the jersey and the channel islands um and i had a very colorful set of friends shall we say when i was a teenager and what i learned um through that and um, things i've seen since is that drugs are absolutely everywhere you won't know it but every time you go to a pub a restaurant a bar probably a local shops anywhere they're everywhere you you can't see them they're hidden but trust me they're in the pockets of people everywhere um and if you knew quite how common um illegal drugs were like even the the class A stuff you would be pretty shocked actually um this little fact for you there number 7 who says you can't you let you get to go to the supermarket dressed as a superhero because you can't really see why not you want to live on a farm start your own business audition for a movie part or take a road trip to wales at a day's notice why not this goes back to uh saying um you don't have to copy other people people think oh no why why would you do that why can't what you can't do that that's too difficult that's too hard or there's all these barriers stopping you to do that 
Sure, but you know what? If you want to go do it, just go and do it. Why not? You know, who says you can't? Who, what's, what's stopping you? Okay, well, figure it out as you go along. You know, life's short. Just go and try stuff. You know, what's the worst that can happen? Number eight, there are many people who live a, a to, who very many, very many people, sorry, um, who are happy to live a normal average life set by cultural conventions. That's fine if you want to. Uh, but if you don't want to, that's also fine. Again, this comes back to um, knowing who you are, knowing what you want to do, not following other people's rules and not letting other people's um, ideas of what you should be doing dictate your life. Because who wants to be normal, quite frankly? Um, if you're happy just doing the same as everyone else, you know, have a nine to five job and, you know, just have a normal kind of life, holiday maybe once a year and whatever it is that makes your life happy, you know, do it, but do it because it makes you happy, not because that's just kind of what other people do. Um, we've talked about things, James and I have talked about things like taking the girls out of school, going traveling on a boat for a year, um, going off, you know, just all sorts of stuff. And people will turn around to us and say, what, that's crazy. You can't do that. You know, I was like, yeah, we'll sell our house and then we're going to go and invest in a few things. And they're like, oh no, my God, that's so risky. Like, do you know what? This is our life and we want to do it how we want to do it. And it might not be quite how other people want to live their life, but that's how we want to do it. And if you, whatever you want to do in your life, that's up to you. You know, people don't understand where you're coming from in your life and you can't expect them to. They're not you. So, you know, don't stress too much about what other people think. Just do it your way. It's your life. And if it goes wrong, well, at least, you know, you've only got yourself to blame then, you know. Um, so, but just do it your way. You know, life's short. Number nine, when someone is angry, crying, drunk, or in any other highly emotional state, listen to what they're trying to say, not what they're actually saying. Now, this was given to me, this was told to me by a, um, a psychologist years ago um, when we were going through some uh, family counselling. And when somebody is very highly emotional, they could be effing and blinding and shouting and, you know, they're, they're just saying really nasty stuff. And what, but what you can do, if you stop listening to what they're actually saying, ignore the swearing, ignore the ranting, listen to what the message is that they're trying to get across. They're probably trying to say something along the lines of, I'm frustrated, I'm angry, I'm sad, I feel like nobody understands me. I don't know how to deal with this situation. Things along those lines. That's what they're trying to say. And what comes out of their mouth is you effing this. I don't know how to. You don't understand. The, what they're trying to say is I need you to understand me and I need help with this. So if you can see beyond the ranting and the swearing, listen to what they're trying to say. Okay, number 10, the people who mind don't matter, the people who matter don't mind. Again, if anyone's going to judge you in life, okay, and they disapprove of what you're doing, it doesn't matter, you know, that, that's their problem and, it's, and it's, not, it's not about you, it's about them. The people who love you, they might giggle, giggle at your silly ideas. Um, in my family, I'm lucky to have a, um, a fantastic family and my sisters, or oh, I've got four sisters and they all know what a complete nutcase I am and I do ridiculous things and they just laugh at me they're like oh my god they're rolling their eyes at me the whole time and they know that whatever I do however stupid however ridiculous it is they love me anyway and that's the sort of people you want in your life because people who like disapprove of you that's none of their business even if it is somebody close to you like your family it's none of their business the people who matter don't mind okay and the people who mind don't matter Okay, um, ooh, 12, this is a controversial one, and I will admit this is my personal view, so this is not to have a go at anybody who is highly religious, this is just my personal view, and I don't berate religion anyway, but I think, personally, religion is like Harry Potter, a fantastic work of fiction that brings joy to billions of people, and that's mostly a good thing. I say mostly because there have been lots of wars fought over religion, but apart from that, religion I think whether it's true or not, whether there's gold or not, any of that is mostly irrelevant because I think it helps a lot of people um, have a purpose in life, feel very happy, feel very contented, feel safe um, and it helps them to have a guideline um, of how to live their life. It gives them some values. And so all of that I think is fantastic. 
and I think the fact that I I don't actually have any beliefs along those lines um is is irrelevant to the point I'm making and whether there is actually or isn't a god is also relevant I think if it brings joy to people's life and it brings them purpose and helps them to be uh, good people then religion is a really good thing okay number 13 only fools know everything um never stop learning there is always something more to learn. There is always somebody new to meet. There's always somebody interesting who can teach you something. And it might even be your own kids. It might be somebody. It, it could be somebody you get talking to out and about on the bus. But the day you believe that you know everything about something, you have closed your mind off because things, life is ever evolving. Things are always changing. So always be open to the fact that what you thought and believed yesterday might turn out to be wrong tomorrow. Always keep your mind open. Always be learning. Number 14. If you think looks don't matter a lot, then you're forgetting the fundamental instincts of Homo sapiens survive and procreate life plan. I don't know why we're on this earth. I have no idea. Um, I have no idea what we're supposed to be doing here. I don't think any of us do, really. Um, but what we do know is that we have to try and stay alive for as long as possible. And we have to try and keep the human race going. To keep the human race going, you have to have sex, right? That means you have to attract a mate. You have to be attracted to each other. It's in the word, attract, okay? It's not shallow. It is biological instinct that humans want to look good. People who say that looks don't matter, it's all about personality. Um, focusing on looks is shallow. Um, you should just be, you know, happy with whoever you are and not be bothered about trying to make your, make a, you know, trying to scrub up, trying to make yourself look good, basically. That's, I think that's a fantastic kind of, I think that's a fantastic value to have in that I think it's a really lovely goal. But we are just advanced apes, okay? We want to procreate. That is natural and normal. And to do that, you have to attract a mate and and that means we are driven to want to look good. So why fight it? You know, why try and do all this body positivity stuff? Like, yes, body positive in some respects. But, you know, trying to ignore the fact that looks matter. It's just, come on. We're just advanced apes. That's all it is. Um, you know, don't fight it. Go with it. You want to get dressed up, look good. You want to make an effort. You want to improve your looks in some way. You're just being a human. Okay, it's completely normal and there's nothing wrong with it and nobody should judge you for it. And you're not shallow at all. Okay, number 15. Most people give up too easily. That's pretty self-explanatory in everything in life. In my opinion, divorce rates are ridiculously high. I'm not judging any personal circumstances because, you know, there are things that you have to escape from. But I think there are a lot of areas in life where it's jobs, relationships, um situations that you're finding challenging um sometimes when you persevere and you try and fight them out you find there's a solution after all um uh, i do think people give up too easy number 16 lists about how to live your life should not involve flossing your teeth no one lay on their deathbed wishing they drank more water and flossed i'm all up for healthy living totally but you know that bus might come and knock you over tomorrow so live a little um, number 17, if your partner says they've never once considered with being someone else, they're lying. But if they tell you they thought that, it shows true trust and honesty, which is what at least 42% of relationships are missing and therefore end in divorce. 42% of relationships, by the way, end in divorce. That is a fact I looked up, which is atrocious and awful. Um, and I think it's okay to have thoughts like that. I think, <laughs> I think anyone who says that they've never ever considered cheating, even as a fleeting thought, is lying. But if you can be so close to your partner that you can tell them these things, do you know what? We have things in our relationship to fix. Then you can fix them. If you keep that stuff to yourself, that's where it all goes wrong because then it's gonna come out somewhere. And again, statistically, no judgment statistically, it's the guys who go off, yeah? Many, many men cheat on their wives a lot i don't know what the exact statistic is but it's a lot and you never know about it because they take it with them to the grave okay i know people who've done it and i know their wives don't know i will never ever 
ever share it. I will take those with me to the grave. But I've seen the statistics too, and it happens. And I think it's because there's a connection missing and you need to be honest, you need to talk about everything. Even if that something is, I don't happy in this relationship anymore and I wanna go off with someone else. If you can say that, then you're opening the doors to a solution to the problem. Hey, okay. number 18, if they judge you, it says more about them than you, their problem, each to their own, open your mind. I talked about this a little bit already. Um, yeah, just, it, it's nobody's business. Like, lots of people love to give you their opinion, don't they? Oh no, this is how you should bring up your children. Why are you eating that? No, no, we can't do that. You can't wear that. <laughs> Ever been told as a teenager, you're not going out wearing that? What did I do? I tell what I used to do. Get on the school uniform in my get on the school bus, sorry, in my school uniform with the clothes I wanted to wear in my bag and then change. I'm not saying that was right. My point is you've got to be you. You've got to be you. And people who judge you just aren't worth listening to. Because at the end of the day, your gut instinct is usually right. If not in the short term, in the long term. I like to listen to my gut. It, it gets me into trouble, but it, you know, I'm happy. Um, number 19, you will never be able to persuade everyone. See the Flat Earth Society for a good example. If you don't, haven't heard of it, the Flat Earth Society is genuinely a thing. It's an enormous group of people who 100% believe the Earth is flat. I know. I, I'm not even... What do you say to that? You know? So, that's just proof. Some arguments you're not going to win. Whether you're right or not, there's going to be someone who disagrees with you. So, number 20. Age is meaningless. I've met 10-year-olds wiser than 70-year-olds. I've seen 80-year-olds fitter than 18-year-olds. I was on a film set once um, with an actress who was 86. She was an incredible actress. Um, she did look 86. She had uh, she was playing a wise woman. She's a fantastic actress. And, uh, and we were talking and I was saying, I was a personal trainer, blah, blah, blah. And she said, oh, I see a personal trainer every week. I can do five body weight squats all by myself. She showed me the five most perfectly executed squats you've ever seen. No trouble. S legs stronger than most teenagers. It was absolutely like, I was like, oh my God, that's what I want to be like when I'm 86. I'm going to be doing squats like that. It was just amazing. And I've had conversations with 10 year olds that make me feel dumb, I swear. It's, age is just a number, okay? So don't any, judge anybody by their age. I see what, when I had Aurora, uh, she's 10 now. So I know, I get told I look young. So if you think, roll me back 10 years, um, a lot, most people thought at first that I was a teenage mum. Um, and people have pre preconceptions about teenage mums, rightly or wrongly. Um, so I, I knew what it was like to be f to be treated like a teenage mum. Yeah, I wasn't a teenager at all. I was like, I was 25 when she was born. Um, and I was married. Um, well, no, I got married when she was one. I said I got married a year later. But I was 25 years old, a stable relationship. We, she was planned and everything. Um, but yeah, people judged me because they thought I was a teenager. Um, and it really, really wasn't nice, actually. I used to get handed flyers and stuff for like young mum support groups. I'm like, I got a ring on my finger here, you know. Um, but yeah, so ignore age, it's just a number. Okay, number 21, regret is nothing. Everything you've seen, tried, done, the good, the bad, the stupid, the dangerous and the boring. It's all been the story that shaped you, who you are today. Whether you like who you are today or not, it's all just stories and lessons on a journey. You'll regret the things that you didn't do way more than the things you did. I think that's self-explanatory, but yeah, really, I mean, I've done some dumb stuff in my life. I've been through some awful things and I've been, I've just, you know, there is stuff that could be perceived as negative from my life. I don't regret a bit of it because I'm really happy with who I am today and everything I've done has taught me something and has brought me to the person I am today. So... And you can't change the past anyway. What is the point? Regret is so flipping pointless because you can't change it. You shouldn't, even if you think, oh, that I shouldn't do that and you should move forward and learn from it. Great, do that. But that's not the same as regretting doing it in the first place because you hadn't done it, then you wouldn't have any lessons to learn. And learning lessons is always a good thing. Number 22, the clock is going to keep ticking and the calendar page is turning whether you like it or not. You can choose to do something today, make a change, or to do the or undo the thing you wanted to do, or not. 
In 12 months time, you'll either have grown as a person and experienced life or not. It's up to you. Do it. Don't do it. Change. Don't change. But life's going to be moving forward anyway. So don't be moaning about the same stuff this time next year. Do something about it. Don't moan about it. But you can do something. Yeah, you can. Your life is in your hands. For the most part, your life is in your hands. And finally, number 23. Perfection is an impossible destination. But life can be pretty effing good. If you aim for perfect, you will be disappointed. The acceptance that things are not perfect and things won't always go to plan is so comforting. It is such a weight lifted off your shoulders. Just knowing, do you know what? Things will be really good, but if they don't turn out perfect, I'm okay with that. And that's a really contented place to be. And you apply that to absolutely everything in life. I'm up to the end now. You've been here long enough. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I will link this up to the blog when that's up there. In the meantime, I'd love to hear your thoughts or comments below. And if you've got any life lessons of your own, I would love to hear them. In the meantime, Pollyanna Hale from the fitmumformula.com, signing out.